Hi and welcome to sketching graphs of 1 over x, x cubed and a to the power of x. Just before we start, a reminder that there is a notes jotter available for this video. Check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. Okay, so I'm going to begin by drawing the graph of y equals x cubed plus 2x squared take away 3x. So this is a cubic um, cubic graph uh, because the highest power that we have is an x cubed. And I'm going to plot it from x equals negative 3 up to x equals 2. And so for this, all I'm going to do is I'm going to use my calculator to find each of the uh, values for y. And so all I'm going to do is I'm going to replace x with the values in the table. So to begin with, it will be negative 3 cubed plus 2 brackets negative 3 squared take away 3 brackets negative 3 and all I'm going to do is I'm going to type that into a calculator and so all I'm going to do is um, brackets negative 3 and that is going to be cubed so I need to use the cubed button plus 2 brackets negative 3 and that is going to be squared and then take away three brackets negative three and that will give me an answer of zero and if i undo the shade on here i will show you that the answer is zero and there we go um, and we just need to repeat that for each of the other values so if we went then moved on to negative two i'll put it in exactly the same way and in my calculator all i would do is delete the contents of the bracket and replace it with negative 2 and if I do that I will come up with an answer of 6 and if I continue it will be 4 and then 0 and then 0 again and then 10 and so all I want to do now is I just want to plot each of those points onto the graph so negative 3 0 would be here negative 2 6 would be here negative 1 4 would be here 0 0 would be here 1 0 and 2, 10. Now, if we have a look at these points, they're quite clearly not in a straight line, and that is because uh, because when we are dealing with squares and cubes, we actually get a curve. And so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to join these points freehand using a curve. And so we're going to begin at negative 3. It's going to come up here, and then it's going to drop down. And then it's going to hit 0, 0. Now, the key here, because the next point is also 0, this line must drop a little bit below as well before it comes back up to 0. And so we need to take that into account. And then we just need to draw all the way up until we hit our 2, 10. Now, the shape that you can see there, that is a very important shape to look out for. If you see a graph rising, falling, and then rising again, that is your evidence that this is a cubic graph. And so what we have are general forms. A general form for a cubic graph would be y equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. And so that is some number of x, x cubed, some number of b, some number of c, and some number of d. Now, if that is the case, I'm going to highlight this in green because I'm going to show you what this would look like generally. Well, generally, that will look like the graph we have just drawn. It will go up, come down, and then go back up again. In terms of the second one, the only difference you will see in the second graph is that we have negative ax cubed. And so if the uh, x cubed is negative in that graph, well, that will just have the effect of changing the shape slightly in that, in this case, it will actually go down, go up, and then go back down again. And so basically what you are looking for is a shape like this or like this in order to prove that something is a cubic graph. So next we're looking at the graph of a reciprocal function, so y equals 1 over x. Now this 1 over x may be written as, um, as x to the power of negative 1, it would mean the same thing. Um, so y equals 1 over x or y equals x to the power of negative 1. Um, we're going to try and find out what the values uh, would look like for this one. So again, all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my calculator, and in this case it's quite simple because all I want is a fraction. And it's going to be 1 
over whatever my x value is. So the first time it's 1 over uh, negative 2.5. And if I do that, I get negative 2 fifths, which if we use as decimal will be negative 0 0.4. And so there we go, negative 0 0.4. If I do the same for negative 2, well, all I need to do is to go back into uh, the fraction here and just place negative 2. And so that is obviously negative a half, which is negative 0 0.5. And if we have a look, there we go, negative 0 0.5. And we can keep going with the other values, just repeating the same process. So we would be at negative 0 0.6 recurring, I should say there, um, because that is going to be 1 over 3 over 2. Um, and then um, negative 1, well, that is going to give me a value of negative 1. Negative 0 0.5 is going to be negative 2 at zero now this one is actually an important one if i do just show you what happens with this if we go back into our fraction and we type in one over zero what does the calculator tell us well it says it's a math error and that is because it is impossible to divide anything by zero and so what we actually have here is an infinite um un undefined value and so we keep moving and we get zero uh, get two and then one and 0 0.6 recurring again, um, so uh, two thirds, um, and then we have 0 0.5 and we have 0 0.4. And so in this case, what I want to do is just plot how we would show those ones. So negative 2.5 was negative 0 0.4. And so they're about here. Negative two, we're at 0 0.5, so just a tiny little bit further up. Negative 1.5, just a little bit further up from that. And negative one is negative one, so a little bit more, negative 0 0.5, we are at negative 2. But then at 0, we're actually dealing with infinite. So where would that be? Well, it'd be infinitely negative in order to follow the trend that we've got here. But actually, I'm just going to add in an extra value in here. Instead of jumping ahead, I'm going to go to negative 0 0.25. If I place that into the calculator, so negative 0 0.25, well, that would be negative 4. So I can go halfway in here and say that negative 4 will be about here. Now, if we have a look at this as a trend, what it's looking like is a curve. And it's a curve. Oops, I've just missed a point. So I'll just go back. We've got a curve, which is then going to start coming up. Now, that is exactly what we are looking for. It's a nice, smooth curve um, that is coming towards the axis, but it's not quite meeting it. If we look at the positive values um, at, again, if we move in here and went to 0 0.25, well, that answer would be positive 4. And so we can mark positive 4. At 0 0.5, we can get 2. At 1, we get 1. At 1.5, we get 0 0.66. At 2, we get... Um, 0 0.5 and at 2.5 we get 0 0.4 and so again if we join these points together we'll get a nice smooth curve and again it's going to work towards the axis but not hit it and that's actually the same towards the x-axis as well we will never meet the x-axis either and this is the key form of a reciprocal graph a reciprocal graph should always have our axes and then it will always not quite touch the y-axis not quite touch the x-axis and the same in the negative direction so the final type of graph we're going to look at is y equals 2 to the power of x now this is known as an exponential graph and that is because in this case x is actually the indices it's the power that we are being uh, that is being raised to and so let's just have a look at what this one looks like when we type our values into the calculator so the first one is i'm looking for y equals 2 to the power of negative 3 and so 2 to the power of negative 3 well that is 1 8th or 0 0.125 okay so let's pop that into our table 0 0.125 if i then say 2 to the power of negative 2 well let's continue just replace the 3 with a 2 and it's now a quarter or 0 0.25 if i do the same for negative 1 well that is going to be if we go in again replace it negative 1 we're going to get a half or 0 
and we can keep going. 2 to the power of 0. Now, the power of 0 is a very important power. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. And therefore, um, this graph will begin at 0, 1. It will cross the y-axis at 1. If we continue to a power of 1, we'll have 2. And the power of 2 to 2 squared is 4. And 2 cubed, well, that is 8. And so all we're going to do now is plot each of those points. So negative 3, 0 0.125. And all that is obviously very close to the uh, to the x-axis. Um, negative 2 is at 2.5. Uh, sorry, 0 0.25. And so we're about here. Um, negative 1, we're at 0 0.5. So about here and then at zero we're at one at one we're at two two we're at four and three we are at eight and so what you can see here is if you are dealing with the uh, the points being matched what we've got is a very smooth curve but one that rapidly gets bigger bigger and bigger and bigger and steeper and steeper and steeper and that is the key feature of an exponential graph exponential growth means that things um, get uh, get large very very quickly and so what we want is a generic version of this and it's very important the key features um, because this is p q to the x so this means that i am multiplying the value to a power of x uh, by another number now this number is very important because if I say we were looking at the previous one, if I had 3 times 2 to the power of x, if x is 0, then that is 3 times 2 to the power of 0, which is 3 times 1. And no matter what this is, this will always be 1 when it's the power of 0. And therefore, the value p will always be where it crosses the y-axis. And so that is a very key point in these graphs this point where it crosses the y-axis will always be p the number that is being multiplied by at the front the rest of the graph the key area is just what the graph looks like the graph will always have quite a slow increase in the negative values but then in the positive values a very steep increase and that is the important key shape of an exponential graph and so we're going to end with the exam question and this came from the edexcel paper in june 2017 and it was on higher paper two and what we've been given are nine different graphs and a table um, with equations in it and we need to try to match the correct graph with the correct equation so the key thing here is i would first of all like to look at the graphs at the bottom uh, because these are the three types of graph that we've looked at so far now in the first one we have y equals x cubed plus 4x now this highest power is a cubed and therefore we know that this must be a cubic graph so it must go up go down and go back up again now if we have a look at the graphs that we've got um, if we look at the top row the only one that looks sort of like that is c but with C, the pattern actually repeats. It goes up and down again. It is a wave. Therefore, a wave is not a cubic graph. So then that takes out D and E as well. Um, e is just a single U shape. Now that makes it actually an X squared graph. It will be a quadratic graph. And then we come to F. Now F looks sort of like what we've seen here. And because this one, it just has a smooth curve that doesn't necessarily go down and then back up, but it does reach a point right in the center um, where it seems to level off. Now that is because we don't have any x squareds or a number at the end. And that is the key. If you've just got x cubed, it would actually be perfectly like this. And we're only adding on 4x, well, it keeps the same shape. And so f is the cubic graph. It is still in the shape of that almost an n shape that you can see then we come to y equals 2 to the x this one must be an exponential graph an exponential graph should start low and then very quickly get steeper and steeper and steeper and straight away if we look at uh, part one oh sorry uh, graph a you can see straight away that that is a graph exactly like that and therefore there is a 
And then finally, y equals 4 over x. Well, that is a reciprocal graph because we have a number divided by x. And a reciprocal graph should always have a shape like this. And so if we have a look at our graphs, we've actually got two that look quite similar to this. And the important thing here is the key difference between them. Now, this one is a positive graph. The one that we showed before this one is a negative graph so if this had been negative 4 over x we would have had the first graph so the correct one here is h lastly we have the graph sine x now sine is a wave so it is one of the wave form graphs so it's either c or d in this case the key one here is that sine starts at zero so sine zero there we go sine zero is zero and therefore c is the sine graph the other one that we have here this one would be a cosine graph and that is because it's beginning with uh, it's not beginning at zero